Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I have a very special video for you today, which is a haul. <laughs> my name's Kaylin. If you haven't been here before, welcome. I'm very excited because I have a lot of awesome books. <laughs> I seriously have so many. I don't know how many. I haven't counted yet, but it's a lot. <laughs> I got a lot of these books during October. So I have a lot of like thrillery kind of spooky books, but then I also have a lot of like general fall and a few winter books too. So I'm very excited to share them with you. But before we get too far into the video, I do have a sponsor for this video and it is Book of the Month. As you know, I love Book of the Month. They are so nice to work with and they're just an awesome company. And so I'm really, really happy to be sponsored by them again. For those of you that don't know what Book of the Month is, they are the fastest growing and the most popular book subscription service for readers. The company's mission is to help promote new and upcoming authors, which I think is just awesome. My favorite part about Book of the Month is that they really do a good job of trying to have a very diverse group of books, a lot of different genres and authors, and I feel super confident in supporting a company like Book of the Month. The Book of the Month team goes through hundreds of early and new release books, so every single month you will get a choice of five different books, and these books have been carefully curated. They also have a skip policy, which is in my opinion, one of the best skip policies for a subscription service. You can skip at any time and it's no risk to you. They have the best prices for new fiction hardcovers and I have a code for you guys so you can get your first book for $9.99. Let's go over the books that they have for November. I think there's some really great options. And again, there's a big variety to choose from. So the first one is The Star-Crossed Sisters of Tuscany by Lori Nelson Spielman. This takes place in the Italian countryside and it's about family drama. There's a supposed curse in the family and it sounds really good. I love the Tuscany setting. I mean, look at this cover. I just wanna be there. <laughs> one of the ones I'm really excited for is Memorial. This is in adult fiction. And something I love in novels is when love is talked about realistically. And that's exactly what this book is about. It's about the ups and downs of love and the relationship in this book. I just adore reading books that are realistic that you can relate to. And so I'm looking forward to reading this one. The next one is Pretty Little Wife by Darby Kane. And this is a thriller. It's actually a domestic thriller about a husband that disappears. I've only read one domestic thriller in my life, uh, so I'm very excited to read another one. The next one is This Time Next Year by Sophie Cousins. This is such a cute cover. I love the pink with the teal. It has stars all over it. This is a romance, and it's about a really spoiled guy and a girl that has a chip on her shoulder, and they keep bumping into each other. Fate seems to be bringing them together, <laughs> which sounds super duper cute. And last but not least, the one that I am most excited for is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. This is YA, and it's a Romeo and Juliet inspired tale, but it takes place in Shanghai, which I think is so exciting. So it has forbidden love and feuding families. I mean, what more can you ask for? <laughs> if you guys are interested in Book of the Month at all, I highly recommend them. They're such an amazing company. I'll leave their link down below and don't forget to use the code to get your first book for $9.99. You wanna come say hi? Winnie really wants to come say hi. So we're gonna let her. You guys haven't seen her in a while. Here she is. How's my baby? She's like, I am bored. I do not like mommy filming. Okay. <laughs> Let's get into the books. I have them separated into categories. So how about we start with young adult books first? Let's start with this one. This is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This was actually sent to me by Kalani. Thank you so much, Kalani, for sending this to me. It was seriously unexpected, so I really appreciate it. I'm super excited to read it. This takes place at an academy in Vermont. And this school was founded by an early 20th century tycoon, and he wanted this place to be full with hidden riddles, twisting pathways, and gardens. Sounds amazing. I wish I could go there. But years later, someone named Stevie comes to the school, and she's obsessed with true crime, which I can relate. <laughs> so she comes here, and she starts to uncover secrets to a murder that had happened at this school. 
sounds super good. I know this is a the beginning of a series, so I think it would be an awesome book to read sometime in November or in the fall. So yeah. The next book I have is The Bone Witch. This is about a young witch named T, and she is actually a necromancer. And in this world, necromancers are extremely feared. That's all I need to know. <laughs> I've been really obsessed with witch books. I actually have a lot of books about witches in here. I don't know. I just was really into them during October, so I have quite a few. So if you're looking for witchy books, you're in the right place. <laughs> All right, the next one I have is Horrid by Katrina Leno. I am very excited to read this book. I think this is a book that I'm going to try to possibly pick up in November. <laughs> I don't know. I have a huge TBR, so we'll see. But this is about a mother-daughter relationship. They end up moving to New England after their father and husband dies, and they end up moving into the mother's old childhood house. As soon as they move here, the mother starts to deal with some struggles and some demons, I think, some inner demons. While the daughter is trying to make the best of it, she starts to make friends. The daughter then discovers a room, which she thought to be a storage room that was locked, and she ends up finding out that it's actually an old child's room, and everything is untouched, and yeah, definitely a little bit mysterious. So I'm very excited to read this one. All right, the next book I have is Kingdom of the Wicked. And look at this. Those sprayed edges are beautiful. This is about two sisters who are hidden witches. And one night, one of them goes missing. And the other, whose name is Amelia, goes out to find her and discovers her body. So she vows that she is going to take vengeance on whoever murdered her sister. On her journey to discover who it is, she ends up meeting someone named Wrath, who is a prince of hell. <laughs> it sounds really scary, but also good. Um, here's a picture of Wrath. Yep. <laughs> Wrath says he's on Amelia's side and that he will help her to uncover who murdered her sister. But is he really? I don't know. We will see. <laughs> the next book I have is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is, I think, a mix of like Maze Runner and Hunger Games. I think it's about a girl who is participating in these games. She's come from nothing, and the people that run this are super rich, kind of like, you know, in Hunger Games. <laughs> and so she's trying to win the games, I, I think. The next book I have is If We Were Villains by ML Rio. This is definitely one of my most anticipated books. After hearing my friend Lexi talk about this, I was like, yep, adding that to my list. This takes place at a prestigious school, and there there's a group of friends who are part of a Shakespearean club. And during their final year at university, things end up getting a little bit dangerous and a little bit sketchy. <laughs> I liked this little description in here. It says, if we were villains, explores the magical and dangerous boundary between art and life. The final YA book that I have is The Lives of Saints by Leigh Bardugo. This is a collection of short stories about the saints in the Shadow and Bone series world. I love when authors put a lot of time into the culture of the worlds that they create. I just think it's super <laughs> exciting to read about and these are beautiful illustrations. So yeah, just a beautiful book, really. Look at that. Moving on to graphic novels, I only have two of them. So this is going to be a quick one. The first one is Lock and Key by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. So I watched this TV show last year, I think. Was that last year or was that the beginning of this year? I can't remember. <laughs> this year is kind of like a skip year that I just forget what has happened. <laughs> anyway, um, but I heard that this graphic novel series is actually way darker than the TV show, but I thought I would give it a try because I really liked the concept of the TV show. The magic system in this is really interesting. I loved that part of the TV show, so I'm hoping that I'll still like it, even if it's a little darker. I think the illustration style in this is really interesting, so yeah, I'm excited to get into it. Hopefully I like it. <laughs> the next one I have is Avatar The Last Airbender. This is the bind up of The Search. I have the first one, which is The Promise, and I read that over a year ago, so I thought I would get this one. This takes place uh, after the TV show, so you get to see what all the characters are up to after the TV show. I really like these hardcover editions because 
the authors talk about why they made de certain decisions and I just think that's really cool. I love reading author notes like that. Okay, moving on to the adult books I have. I have quite a few, so let's get into it. All right, the next books I have are all by Alice Hoffman and I didn't know this <laughs> until recently. These all go over a family of witches. This first one that she wrote was written in 95 and so it's very much like a 90s type of book which I love <laughs> and this is about two sisters Jillian and Sally and they live with their elderly aunts they're all witches but all the sisters want to do is escape and find love <laughs> I watched the movie for the first time this year and am obsessed with it so I decided to pick up the book and I think I'm gonna enjoy it. The next one is about their aunts and it takes place in the 70s. <sighs> Need I say more? <laughs> Witches in the 70s. It just sounds like such a fun book. I'm really excited and this cover I feel like is super gorgeous. And then her most recent book is Magic Lessons and this is about their ancestor named Maria who was part of the Salem Witch Trials, which is very interesting. I've actually started reading this and I'm really enjoying it so far. All of these books are technically standalone books and you can read them in any order that you want. I decided to start with the Salem Witch Trials, but yeah, I'm very excited. I think it's such a cool concept. Moving on to Night Film by Marisha Peskel. Uh, this, I actually don't really know what it's about. I got it because I heard that it is mixed media, which is really cool. I think it's about a murder. I know it's a book that a lot of people read during the October months, but it looks super good. I'm a big fan of mixed media books. So yeah, very excited to read this one. Next one I have is When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. This is a psychological th thriller. This is about a girl named Sydney who lives in Brooklyn and her neighborhood is slowly starting to change and her neighbors keep moving out of the neighborhood. So she decides to do a walking tour one day and she meets someone named Theo and together they start to dive deep into the history of this neighborhood and it starts to lead them down this path of paranoia and fear and they start to think that maybe her neighbors didn't move out after all. <laughs> okay, the next one I have is The Secret History by Donna Tart. I found this edition in a used bookstore so it's kind of like well loved but I actually love it. I feel like it, it fits with this book. <laughs> this is a classic dark academia book that I feel like so many people love and adore. So I decided I wanted to pick it up. Again, this takes place at a prestigious school and things obviously get dark in it because it's dark academia, <laughs> obviously. I think a lot of these characters end up having like their innocence corrupted by being selfish and it just ugh, it sounds so good. I'm not sure if there's murder in this one, but I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Next one is This Is How You Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone. This is a really short read and I've heard this is kind of trippy. There's two rival agencies, Red and Blue, and they start corresponding with each other and forming this friendship. I think these characters are extremely lonely and so they kind of latch on to each other even though they're in rival agencies. Okay, the next one is a spooky one and honestly, probably the main reason I got this one is because of the cover. It looks so retro to me. Uh, this is Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Caesar. I'm not sure how good this is gonna be but I saw so many people reading it and I loved this cover. I just think it's so retro. It reminds me of like Stranger Things or It. And the title really is what it's about. There's a killer clown in the cornfield. Yes, I'm into it. <laughs> the next one I have is The Wolf in the Whale by Jordana Max Brodsky. And this is a Viking inspired book and you all know my love for Vikings. I actually had one of you reach out to me, I think in, me in a message, I'm pretty sure, and recommend this series to me since you know that I love Vikings. <laughs> this is about a woman who is a Viking warrior and <sighs> that's all I want to be. That's all I want to be in life is a Viking warrior. And she's trying to save her family so she goes on a journey to try to save them. If there's any Viking books that I ever see, Viking and Scottish or Irish, I will read it. <laughs> the next one is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. This is another one that you guys recommended to me. I started watching the TV show and you all said, no, you have to read the books. <laughs> so I decided I would start reading them. I don't exactly know what the book is about, but the TV show is about a witch and a vampire and they fall in love. 
Oh, I mean, so good. It was very much Twilight-esque to me, except for adults, and it's like dark academia feeling as well. I feel like this is just my cup of tea. This one is What Should Be Wild by Julia Fine. This is about a cursed family. The women of this family have been cursed for millennia, and their curse is, is that if they touch another human, they have the power to either kill or resurrect. Daisy, the main character's father, thinks of her kind of as a scientific ex experiment more than his daughter, and he has warned her not to go into the forest. What he didn't tell her is that the women of the family have all disappeared when they go into this forest. But one one day her father disappears so she is forced to go into the woods to try to find him. Okay, the next one is One by One by Ruth Ware. This is another wintry book and I'm a big fan of Ruth Ware. I've heard that this book is not one of her best but I think I'm still gonna read it for the winter season. This is about a group of friends who travel to the French Alps and they are staying in a luxurious chateau. Sounds amazing. But they get trapped by a winter storm and one by one they start to disappear. <laughs> It sounds really good. Uh, I love I love murder mysteries. They're so much fun. Next one is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I love Grady Hendrix. Last year I read Horror Store for Halloween and it was so much fun. It was so much fun. So I'm hoping that this one will be just as fun. I actually don't really know what this one is about, uh, but because I read his last one and heard that this one was really good, um, I decided to pick it up. I'm pretty sure it's about vampire slayers that live in the South? Just a guess. <laughs> my last adult book I have is My Best Friend's Exorcism, another book by Grady Hendrix. I just wanna get all of his books for Halloween time because they're just so much fun. And look, this cover, when I was talking about retro, this is the most retro cover you could ever get. I love it so much. It seriously looks so vintage. It has like little marks. It's perfection. I love it. <laughs> Again, this is another book that I don't really know what it's about, but I'm assuming it's about a best friend's exorcism. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the middle grades I have. I only have three here, uh, but yeah, let's get into it. Two of these were sent to me from my dear friend Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin. I'll leave his channel down below. Amazing, brilliant hilarious. If you're looking for a new booktuber who's just so funny, you'll feel happy after watching his videos, definitely check him out. I'm a big fan of Sophie Anderson, as I'm sure you know. I actually realized, I thought that this book took place in a different setting, but I'm wrong. This is another Russian-inspired book. And again, her books always have a little glossary at the back with all the Russian words that are used in here, and it's so cute. Uh, but this is about a young girl named Alia and she steps through a magical doorway, and there she discovers a new land. This land is tangled by magic, and a bunch of scheming wizards are in charge of it. Soon, Alia learns that she is the one that's going to save this land, and so she must search for the magic inside of herself in order to save them. Again, this one is illustrated, and yeah, I am very excited to read another Sophie Anderson. <laughs> If the light starts changing, by the way, <laughs> I have to start filming uh, in the afternoons, so it's starting to get dark out. But yeah, okay, let's keep going. The next one that Gavin got me was Frostheart Escape from Aurora, and I had talked about this in my TBR, but I wanted to mention it again in case you didn't watch that video. This is a super fun, unique middle grade fantasy. It takes place in like a wintry type of setting, so if you like that, it has almost like ice pirates <laughs> in it and a really cool magic system as well that's kind of based off of song. This is about a main character named Ash. In the first book, he was dealing with coping with these magic powers. And in this one, he's trying to find more information about his family because he is an orphan. Uh, there's lots of really fun creatures in this. He has like a Yeti who's his kind of caretaker and there's lots of illustrations in here as well. The next book I have is The Wild Path by Sarah R. Bogman. It's about Claire and her and her family own some horses. She's really close with her family. Her brother is struggling and has to go to rehab. So because of this, they might have to sell their horses. But Claire is determined to keep her family together, including her horses. So it sounds so cute. And I feel like this cover is really, really fall. Such a beautiful cover. 
um, yeah, it sounds like a really hard hitting story too. So we will see. <laughs> okay, moving on to the final category, which is classics. Let's start with these bad boys. I have the Chronicles of Narnia here. I recently got this whole series in and these are like the original covers. I think they're so cute. They also have illustrations in them as well, which is just so pretty. I really, really like these editions. I'm super excited to start reading these. When I was younger, I only read the first I don't even think I read the first three. I'm pretty sure I just read the first two in this series. And so I decided that this year I really wanted to start picking these up. I for sure want to get to The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Uh, this is one that I want to read during Christmas time. It's just like the perfect Christmassy, wintry book. And I'm a huge fan of C.S. Lewis. I said it before, I'll say it again. <laughs> The next book I have is Nordic Tales. These are folk tales from Norway, Sweden, Finland, Iceland, and Denmark. And this is a bunch of short stories that I am very excited to read. I love fairy tales and I've never read any Nordic fairy tales. And a lot of these I feel like will relate to my heritage. So they look super cute. They look very much like wintry. The next classic I have is Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. I've never read this Jane Austen book and this is her like gothic literature book. I know it's kind of her poking fun at gothic literature so I'm very excited to read this. I'm a big fan of Jane Austen. I don't know anything else about it besides that but it's Jane Austen like you don't need to know <laughs> I have a bunch of these like cloth bound editions uh, so get ready for that next one is the complete poetry of Edgar Allan Poe I've only read a few of Edgar Allan Poe's stories and I thought it would be really fun to read some of his poetry yeah he's an interesting guy so I thought it would be fun to do uh, this is definitely something that I would read in the fall as well. And look at how cute. It's so tiny. The next one is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. And I have never read this one. Another clap. I mean, obviously, I think most of these classics I haven't read. No, that's a lie. I've read some of them. I actually have tried to read this book multiple times and haven't gotten through it <laughs> just because it's thick. Like, this is one of the thickest classics I've ever seen. It's, oh my gosh, it's like 1,200 pages. Ooh, gonna have to dedicate some time to that one. <laughs> I've seen the movie a long time ago. I don't really remember what it's about, except that the main character gets imprisoned wrongfully, and then he takes vengeance, I think. Gosh, I may be totally wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> the next one I have, and I've actually talked about in my TBR as well, because I want to read this in November, is Rebecca, the one and only. <laughs> um, this is another classic that I've been wanting to read for years and years and years, and I haven't, so I thought I would pick it up. This is a thriller, and it's one of those classic thrillers that I think so many people have gotten inspiration from. It's a lot of people's favorite books of all time, so oh, I just can't wait. This is about a young girl who falls in love with a millionaire, they get married, and she moves into his mansion. She starts to uncover secrets of his late wife, Rebecca. Very excited! <laughs> okay, the next two are very, very classic gothic literature. And boy, oh boy, are these editions beautiful. The first one is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I have read this classic, but it's been years. I really wanna spend some time reading some more classic gothic literature. So I thought I would add this to my collection so that I can read it again. We all know Frankenstein. I feel like I don't need to tell you what it's about. <laughs> the next one is Dracula by Bram Stoker. I've never read Dracula. I've heard it's really good though, so I'm excited to read it. Another book that, you know, I probably don't have to tell you what it's about. <laughs> I think it'll be a really fun book to read during like Halloween next year. I know, a lot of these are like Halloween-y books that I got during Halloween and I didn't do a haul. I'm sorry. <laughs> the very last book that I have for you guys is The Talented Mr. Ripley. I just love when companies make special editions of classics like, <gasps> 
They're beautiful. They're the most beautiful books. <laughs> this is another thriller. And if you guys haven't seen the movie, I would highly recommend it. It was really, really fun to watch. About obsession and how that can lead to someone making wrong decisions. There's murder. That was my final book. You made it through. Congratulations. <laughs> This was a lot of books. Uh, yeah, if you've read any of these, please let me know. I hope you found some new recommendations to add to your book list. Let me know which ones you're most excited for, but that's it. But thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Love you guys. Bye.